Hi, this is Frankie from AboutScript, and in this video we're going to be learning about Knockout.js. So, uh, and then from there you can learn more and more things to be able to create full web applications. So, Knockout does things differently than traditional um, web development packages such as jQuery, although you can use jQuery with Knockout. Um, the old pattern of doing things was you um, set up classes and IDs on your elements and that's how you found them and interacted with them, moved them around, and changed all sorts of stuff on them. But Knockout uh, decided that we should kind of take a step back from that and we should have the elements ask for us to do stuff to them and um, have all of our data defined in our JavaScript and not uh, be building HTML strings and all sorts of terrible stuff like that that's been going on in web development for a long time. So to use um, Knockout we just have to start by learning those concepts and we will do that um, starting here. So what we have is just a basic HTML file with some style sheets to find at the top, um, Knockout.js included, and um, an empty script file currently. And if we go to our application, we can see that it really does nothing. It just has an input in the middle, and nothing happens when you fill it in. So let's change that and make this an interactive web application. The first thing we're going to need to do is um, start by using something called data-bind. So what this does is it tells Knockout that this is something that's going to be updated. This is something that we want Knockout to take a look at and keep track of and change when necessary. And we do this using a JSON like format. It's basically everything except for the opening and closing brackets, um, or rather a JavaScript object, not uh, not JSON. But um, what we do is we specify um, various bindings, such as a text binding, a value binding, a click binding. Um, in this case, we're using value which is the most common one you will use for input fields. And we're going to be creating an application that greets the user. So we need to uh, have a value for their name. And that's going to be our first value. Now in order to attach this to our JavaScript code, all we need to do is go and create ourselves a view model, which sounds a lot more complicated than this. So uh, a view model is basically a function. And this function has a name such as view model or greeting application or whatever you would like. It doesn't take any parameters unless you choose to give it some. And uh, for now, all we need is one line which says uh, their self equals this, which is a coding pattern borrowed from Python. And basically, this keeps track of our uh, view model by putting in a variable so when we create functions inside of this they're always referring to the view model. Um, the next thing we have to do is come down here and actually create an instance of our view model. So what I like to do is create a window.app um, variable which is useful for debugging and we're just going to say new view model. Now uh, Currently, Knockout doesn't know anything about this. We don't have any references to Knockout or anything. So we need to tell Knockout to apply this to our website. So we type uh, KO, which is where all the Knockout stuff is stored. And we type apply bindings. And we pass it a reference to our view model, which is in window.app. You could also directly place a new view model in there and it would be sealed off from outside consumption. Now, to create our uh, name variable, we could just say um, self.name equals you know some name. However, we want Knockout to keep track of this variable. So in order to do that, we have to create something called an observable, which can and giving it a default which could be a blank string, it could be um, an example name such as Bob or anything you like. We'll just leave it at Bob for now. Now if we come back to our application and um, right now we're not doing anything with this variable so it's not going to be very interesting. What I believe we should do is create an element to just show a greeting. 
So we're going to create an h3 element, a header, and it's not going to have any uh, default content in it. But what we're going to do is bind this to a different type of binding, which is called the text binding. Now all the text binding does is set the inner text property of the element whenever the value changes. So we can put um, uh, just arbitrary JavaScript code in here, such as hello and a comma plus name. Now this looks right. However, um, one thing that we always need to remember with knockout is unless you're just giving one property, you need to access the observable by calling it. What this does is it helps knockout track where your variable is checked so it knows what elements are depending on it. Now if we go back to our um, application and we refresh the page, what we're going to see is that we can type in something here and it'll show up um, with a greeting down here. So if we were to change this to Joe or the ever so classic world with an exclamation point, you see that it changes whenever we leave the field. And in future videos, we'll go over how to make a change as you're typing. So um, now we have that. We can also do some fun things, such as create a button. And we can find our, uh, we can have our button say announce. And what this is going to do is alert us the name. So we can just put alert and um, what we should, uh, what we need to do is actually create a, a click handler. So click, hold on, and maybe we'll just name our, um, our click handler announce. Now in order to create this, because all of these are relative to our application, we need to come here and set self.announce to a function. And this will be called whenever our element is clicked. And all we want to do is say alert name. And what that's going to do is when we refresh our page and click the button, I believe you already know that it's just going to say the name. So we're going to move on. Now uh, we have our greeting defined here, but say we want to actually alert our greeting instead of our name, but we still want it to show up here and we don't want to be rewriting code. So the best way to do that is to just extract this into our uh, JavaScript code and give it a handy name such as greeting. Then if we come over here, we can create self.greeting. Um, which is going to be something called a KO computed. Basically, it's a function that um, is updated every time a value that it checks is updated. So, for example, if we say var name equals self.name, because we are calling this internally in this function, it's letting knockout know that our greeting variable um, would like to be notified and rechecked every time name is changed, as well as any other values that we check in this. And what we're going to do is just return um, hello plus our name. Now, anywhere in our code, we can call greeting and get our greeting. So for example, I put it in here. And of course, we have to call it. It's going to alert our greeting. And then over here, our text is going to be set to the observable greeting, and everything's nice and integrated. So when we refresh the page, you see we can change this to John, and our text updates. And if we hit announce, we have some sort of error, which says greeting is not defined, and that's because we need to call it self.greeting. And if we announce, it's going to tell us our name and say hello. Okay, great. Now, let's say we want to do something such as a, a common activity such as a toggle. Now, toggles are really cool. Um, what we're going to make is a toggle that uh, decides if our element is important or not. So we're going to create a button. And we're going to 
have important in it. Now, in order to create a toggle, we can uh, make a very simple function called the generator function. And what the generator function does is return another function. This is very useful in Knockout for things like click handlers because um, we can create a function inline and it, res it returns a function that does what we want every time it's clicked. So it's going to ask for an observable to toggle. And then when we come over here, we're going to be returning a function. This is the actual function it's going to be called by our click handler. And we're going to update our observable with whatever our observable isn't. So if our observable is true, not true is false. And if our observable is false, not false is true. So it just switches the value of our observable. Now we're also going to create a property called important. And that's just going to be a regular KO observable. And we give it a value such as false or true. Now we come over here, and what we're going to want to do, um, just so you know, you can put these data.bind things um, and separate them on different lines. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, bind this so that when we click it, it's going to toggle important. What we also want to do, though, is we want to change some styles on things. So Knockout is a handy um, uh, binding for changing uh, class on something. So how it works is we type style, or sorry, we type CSS and hit colon, and we create a JavaScript object. And in here we give a class such as button primary, which will change our button to blue given our current CSS. And we're going to say that we want button primary to be uh, the class to be enabled whenever we have important um, as a true value. Now we can also come up here and, for example, on our header, and separate this into another line. And we want to put a style on this. So how the style works is um, you give it a style such as color. And we can uh, give a color. So for example, we could just type red here. Or we can say um, reading color. So now we come over here. And we're, we're going to create a KO computed. color and basically what this is going to do is it's going to ask if we're important and if we are it'll return red and else it'll return um, say gray Now we come back to our application. We're going to reload the page. And let's just look and see what we think is going to happen. So we have our value of a name. And this is going to be our greeting. And the color is going to be our greeting color. Our greeting color is based on our important value here. Um, and we can toggle that by clicking the important button. We know we've clicked the important button because it will have the button primary class on it. Um, if it's important. Otherwise, it just won't. It'll just be a regular button. So if we come here and we click important, we see that our text turns red because we set that style, and this turns blue because we set a class that does that. And you notice we can change our name to Sam, and it changes the color there. We can also still use our announce because this is all bound to data, and that's really the heart of Knockout.js is the data. Without the data, we don't have the application. But once we do have this data, such as whether things are important or not, we can very quickly bind them to our, um, our view and let the user see what's going on to the best of our abilities. So that's a brief introduction to Knockout.js. And there is a ton of stuff to learn about it. 
and I've been uh, working on learning for quite a while now and working on some professional projects with it. So um, I look forward to teaching you more about it in the next video. Thank you.